Acute coronary syndromes, very important thing for life, not only for exam, but for life. It's basically about life or death, because as you know, heart is the most important organ in a way, because that's the one which like keeps all the other organs alive, and when this fails, you're dead. So that's why we are, why cardiology is so important, actually. Okay, and what is the flight plan? So today, first, I'm going to, sorry, again, you know it, I'm sure, but maybe some missed my lectures. What is ischemia? I'm going to go a bit more deeper. I don't know. You know, I just, to someone, I said it already in a detail. To someone, I just skipped it. Depends. So ischemia. Then we're going to continue with, in a way, already clinical terms, but now very much related to heart only okay those are the main ones that we're going that that's going to be the main main thing to it apart with the terms and then later on i'm going to tell you about ecg changes that is uh, especially what you should look for okay how you how you should look for it wh what you should check what you should not and very basics now but that's the important thing. That's the most important thing you should remember. I won't tell details about it. And and fourth one, I'm going to tell you about ECG dynamics. What I mean is in time, how the ECG changes in time. Okay? Concerning MI. That means how it evolves in the time. First day, second day, month, year. And at, at the end, Jose is going to come and you're going to do a case with him. Okay? So this is the flight plan. And basically my normal question would be, as always, what is ischemia? And m many of you, and especially if I ask you, what is a, what is a clinical, like, what is the clinical term for acute ischemia of heart? Think it over now. What is that acute? No. I think most of you, if you were not on my lecture before, you would think of MI. But it's not true. It's not MI. It's angina pectoris. And why? Because ischemia, ischemia, ischemia is a uh, reversible process. Okay? And ischemia means it's, there's a big difference between ischemia and hypoxia. And even in some USMLE books, they only talk about hypoxia, which is not true. It's the main thing, but it's not pure definition. So the purest definition would be because ischemia is due to decreased perfusion, it means that there's going to be decrease of O2, obviously, but not only this, but also all the nutrients and everything that the blood brings, and there's going to be buildup of waste products. That's crucial. Okay, so watch out. Over here on one page, we got two times hypoxia. Hypoxia, only pure hypoxia, means that there's it talks only or only defines the oxygen in the tissue in the tissue that's important that means partial pressure o2 in tissue and hypoxemia talks about level of o2 in the blood if it ends with emia it means in the blood okay so it's p partial arterial pressure mainly you mean so that's the only thing so remember, if you have only like like only hypoxemia and only hypoxia, rather there's something with oxygenation of blood. There could be decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the air. There could be something with lungs, which means restrictive or obstructive diseases. Anything with ventilation, you can be on opiates, and then because you're sedated, you won't ventilate as you should. So O2 is going to be decreased, and CO2 is going to go up. Okay. Yeah, or you can be on a ventilator which is set not properly, and you're vent hypoventilating. So again, oxygenation won't be enough. And as a, again, I'm repeating myself: if you're going to be anywhere else where the air that you're breathing has a decreased pressure pressure of oxygen, you're going to have hypoxemia and, and immediately hypoxia in the tissue. Of course, 
in the tissue it always depends how much the tissue is metabolically active okay yeah okay that's also a very important factor yeah but basically hypoxemia in the blood hypoxia in the tissue and now we got ischemia and how how is the hypoxia made by ischemia well it's because the decreased perfusion okay so the level of the oxygen in the blood could be whatever but let's assume it's normal but if you just decrease the perfusion of the tissue the oxygen in the tissue because the perfusion is slower then they will take more and that's why the partial pressure of oxygen will decrease if the flow is slower through the tissue it's going to be decreased so over here the hypoxia is due to ischemia okay and you call it what actually this you got four types of hypoxia this one is hypoxic hypoxia in a way if, but it's a general term but the uh, example th this would be hypoxic hypoxia because the o2 is already um, uh, low in the and this is ischemic hypoxia okay and how is it related to mi infarction in general well infarction means and I'm going to make it black because it's dead. Infarction means necrosis, nothing else. This is necrosis, but necrosis is a general term. A anytime a cell, cell bursts, you call it necrosis. You know, necrosis, apoptosis. So when they uncontrollably burst and, and, and spit the enzymes out of them and they, they explode, you call it necrosis but if the necrosis is due to decreased perfusion of the tissues you can be more specific and you call it infarction so you can every everywhere where you have blood supply you can have ischemia and that you're having all the time it's a reversible process ischemia means ischemia distorted chemia of the tissue every time you compress a vessel there's a schema behind it. Or every time there's a decreased pressure, general, I mean, like, like systemic pressure, and the flow to the tissue is slower, you are creating ischemia, especially in the periphery, as we talked in the shock lecture. Yeah? Okay? So this is what you have to understand. This is because of the decreased flow. Okay? Good. And... So there's distorted ischemia, but as the example with the legs or whatever, if you put a rubber in your, in your, um, on your, I don't know, wrist, whatever, and you're going to squeeze it or tourniquet, you're causing ischemia. But also if, if you run too much, you know, uh, sometimes the tissues cannot cope with that and they're getting into ischemia, okay, or whatever. If you, it always depends, yeah. But you got the point, I understand, if I understand. And very important is the are the waste products that, that are built over there. Because what? It's what? It's CO2 goes up, lactate, what are, K, uh, potassium goes up, okay? And in this case, if these, these things go up in the tissue, they trigger a pain sensation because you've got a free nerve endings over there. And typically, if the nerves are fine, if, if the innervation is fine, you will sense it as a pain, which is a great feedback for you. You know, hey, you should maybe, you know, stand up and bit walk because you're going to kill your legs, okay, or whatever. So, so okay, or so it's a, it's the only, basically, it's the only impulse which tells you that you should do something. If, if you know, pain is the ultimate, like, uh, if if we're uh, for the laziest pe people uh, anywhere. Uh, the only thing that's going to move with them is a the pain, okay? So it's a great feedback for you. You know, there's something in your body going on, and, and so it's a great sensor. Watch out. There's a different situation in brain because brain has not, it's not a peripheral nerve. It's a central nervous system. That's why you don't feel like a uh, pain. But what is a ischemic attack in, in brain? What do you call that? It's called transitory ischemic attack. And you can just watch a video on Coiled about that. That's, I talk about it really in detail. But it means, again, it's an analogy to angina pectoris. It's angina pectoris of your brain. But it's not hurting because it's a CNS. It will hurt later when it when the brain expands and it, it like irritates the meninges or whatever. You're going to have a headache maybe. But typically you won't. 
If just a part of the brain is ischemic temporarily, you're going to lose what? You're going to lose function. You won't move with your leg or, or arm, or you won't speak, or you won't see something. And if it's only transitory ischemic attacking, it's going to come very soon back, typically in one hour. And if this won't turn into necrosis, it's only transitory ischemic attack. And, and just the same works for the heart. If the ischemia is really like for minutes, and then it disappears, it's going to be only ischemic attack, but you're going to sense a pain. If it's going to continue longer and longer and stay more or longer than 20 minutes and 30, you would think of rather that already some cells died, bursted, and it's necrosis, and you can call it infarction. Okay? But anyways, in general, in is defining ischemia and infarction, we don't care if, it, if it's painful or not. We care only if the cells survive. They were not feeling well, but the, they survive. It's ischemia. If they died, it's infarction. It's, unre it's not reversible. They're dead. And so the term ischemia infarction you use anywhere where the tissue is dependent on blood supply. Nails, you won't see uh, necrosis of your nails, okay? Or ischemia. Or hair. Or enamel, okay? Yeah? So, so, so that's very important that you, you should understand, okay? So basically, although we say infarction, especially over here in Europe, we say infarction, and basically it's so so much used that we mean the, because it's the most deadly, we say he had an infarction, we mean myocardial infarction. It's not proper, you should say really myocardial infarction, because you can have an infarction of your guts, liver, kidneys, brain. Yeah, In brain you can say also stroke or cerebrovascular accident, which is a fantastic term. Cerebral vascular, that's the important thing, vascular accident, because the problem is with perfusion. Basically, ischemia, so angina pectoris, or myocardial infarction, it's nothing else than a heart vascular accident. Okay? So it's everything is about perfusion. Good. And today especially. Good. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.